students, and welcome to the lecture on Data Link Protocols. After the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the Data Link Protocol functions. Explain character and bit-oriented protocols. Describe the data transmission modes. Discuss the asynchronous data link protocols. Explain the synchronous data link protocols. Let's start with a brief introduction to data link protocols. Computer networks communicate using protocols which define the procedures that the systems involved in the communications process will use. A data link protocol is a set of rules implementing and governing an orderly exchange of data between layer 2 devices, such as line control units and front-end processors. The purpose of the data link layer is to transfer blocks of data without error between two adjacent devices. Adjacent devices are physically connected by a communication channel such as telephone lines, coaxial cables, optical fibers, or satellites. The implication of such a physical link is that the data bits are delivered in exactly the same order in which they are sent. Let's now take a look at the data link protocol functions. Data link protocol functions include line discipline, flow control, and error control. Line discipline coordinates hop-to-hop -hop data delivery, where a hop is a computer, a network controller, or some type of network connecting device, such as a router. Line discipline. Line discipline is coordinating half-duplex transmission on a data communications network. The two fundamental ways that the line discipline is accomplished in a data communications network our Enquiry, Acknowledgement, ENQ, ACK, and Poll Select. ENQ, ACK. The ENQ, ACK line discipline procedures determine which device on a network can initiate a transmission and whether the intended receiver is available and ready to receive the message. The initiating station begins a session by transmitting a frame of data called an Enquiry or ENQ, which identifies the receiving station. Poll Select. The Poll Select method of line discipline works with topologies where one device is designated as a primary station and the other device is a secondary station. Whenever a multipoint link consists of a primary device and multiple secondary devices using a single transmission line, all exchanges must be made through primary device. Flow control. Flow control defines a set of procedures that tells the transmitting station how much data it can send before it must stop transmitting and wait for an acknowledgement from the destination station. The two common methods of flow control are stop and wait and sliding window. Stop and wait flow control. The sending station sends a frame of data and then waits for an acknowledgement from the other station before sending further data. The other party can stop the flow of data by simply withholding an acknowledgement. Sliding window flow control. With sliding window flow control, a source station can transmit several frames in succession before receiving an acknowledgement. There is only one acknowledgement for several transmitted frames, thus reducing the transmission time considerably over the stop and wait technique. Error control. Error control includes both error detection and error correction. Error detection at data link layer can be accomplished with VRC, LRC, or CRC and error correction is generally accomplished with Automatic Repeat Request, ARQ. With ARQ, any time a transmission error is detected, the destination station sends a negative acknowledgement, or NAK, back to the source station 
requesting retransmission of the last message frame or frames. ARQ also calls for retransmission of mission or lost frames. Let's now have a look at character and bit-oriented protocols. Control information is transmitted by the protocols either in separate control frames or as overhead added to the data and included in the frame. Data link protocols are generally classified as either character or bit oriented. Character oriented protocols. Character oriented protocols interpret a frame of data as a group of successive bits combined into predefined patterns of fixed length, usually 8 bits each. Each group of bits represents a unique character. Control information is included in the frame in the form of standard characters from an existing character set, such as ASCII. Bit-Oriented Protocols A bit-oriented protocol, or BOP, is a discipline for serial by bit information transfer over a data communications channel. Control information is transferred as a series of successive bits that may be interpreted individually on a bit-by-bit -bit basis or in groups of several bits rather than in fixed length group of n bits. Here there are no dedicated control characters. Let's now learn about the data transmission modes. The manner in which alphanumeric data characters are transmitted and received between terminals is given by the data transmission modes. Two modes available are character and block. Character mode. Character modes are transmitted asynchronously. Whenever the operator depresses a key, the data characters are sent from the source to destination station and are displayed on the screen at the current location of the cursor. Block mode. Here, when the operator enters the characters, they are stored in the buffers and displayed on screen. When the operator gets ready to send the information, the enter, send, or return key is pressed, which then transmits all the data characters previously entered into the memory. The assortment of characters transmitted as a group is called a block or frame of data. The block mode is more appropriate for multi-drop data communication circuits operating in a polling environment. So what we're going to look at obviously as I've just said is data transmission. We have different types of transmission. The first one we're going to look at is serial transmission. So let's have a little look at what serial transmission is. Well serial transmission takes place on a single wire and it's one bit at a time that gets transferred. Uh, so as we look here if this was our wire one bit would be going down at a time. When would we use this? Well, we'd use this when we're sending data, obviously. An example of when we'd use it is a serial mouse. Um, we'd usually use it, justification of use, is when there's relatively small amounts of data, the accuracy of data is important and the speed is not as much of an issue. Okay? Um, the positives are it's reliable, it's simple, um, and the bits can't get mixed up because they're only going down one at a time, so you couldn't have one of these bits jumping ahead of another one. Negatives of it, though, is obviously because we're only sending one bit at a time, it is slow compared to parallel. Okay, so the next type of transmission we're going to look at is parallel. Right, so if you have a look at parallel, Parallel is when we have several wires, and that means several bits at a time can go down the wires. So, an example uh, that I can think of, if we just look at this, we've got several wires in it, and we've got three bits here going down at the same time. Um, an example of use in this case could be, again, we're sending data, it could be a printer. Sometimes you have parallel printers. Those of you who've got a USB uh, printer, then obviously that is not um, an example. But if you have a parallel printer, an old printer, where you've got a wire that has uh, several wires within it, then that's an example. The other ones that are more obvious will be the processor uh, sending to the graphics card, the hard drive sending data to the processor, video streaming or games console 
uh, sending data to the processor. Why do we use it? Well, it's it's faster than serial. Um, the advantages are it's faster than serial. Uh, so when we use it, we use it when the speed of devices uh, is required that it sends data fast and it should receive the data quickly. The volume of data is great and the time sensitive time sensitivity of data is important. We need the data to arrive quickly. So video streaming is a good one to think about. What we can't have is uh, some bits taking a bit longer and then um, the video pausing or stopping in the middle of it. So it's time sensitive. We need it there quickly. Um, that's obviously your speed and also the volume of data there for video streaming is going to be big. Same with games console. The games console uh, what we don't want is to have things stopping in the middle and, and there being a lag potentially because of uh, the speed that data is being sent to the processor. Okay, Don't confuse that with the lags that occur because of your internet connection, that is something different. Um, the problem though, the negatives we've got with this type of communication is that it's less reliable. The bits can get mixed up. Okay, Obviously we're sending different bits at the same time, one of these might go down quicker than one of the others and therefore the order will be incorrect when it gets to the other end. All right. So if, if this wire is sending data quicker than this one, that's not a problem. But if this wire is sending data quicker than this one and this is the order from top to bottom that they should be being received in, then we're going to have data in an incorrect order. So what do we do uh, about that? Well, you find out a bit later. Okay, right, let's have a look at this. Simplex. All right, simplex is where data can only travel in one direction. So the data will be traveling down a wire in one direction. <laughs> one direction. Do a little song for you there, but I'm not going to. Uh, so data can only travel down in one direction. An example could be your TV or your radio or teletext. Those of you remember the old teletext where um, you could look at maybe the football scores by typing in a number on your um, machine and you, you didn't get a two way process. It was just delivering information to you, it wasn't uh, allowing you to put other things in. Uh, on the TV that was the old teletext. Have a look on YouTube, I'm sure you could find something about teletext on YouTube. Um, as it, Again, TV is a one-way process and so is radio. So data travels in one direction, simplex. How do you remember that? Well, simplex, one direction as a band are pretty simple. Um, they look simple to me anyway. So maybe that, that would be a way to remember it. and. You see them all the time on TV and radio, so maybe something like that. All right, the next site we're going to look at is duplex. And it should be quite common sense. Simplex is one direction, duplex. Uh, you're talking of two directions, and du duo is another word for two, so two directions. Data travels in both directions. Uh, telephone conversation, you're speaking, someone else can reply and speak back to you, or Wi Fi connection. Um, you do something um, on your computer, tra data transfers through your router. At the same time, though, your router needs to make sure that it's connected to you on the Wi-Fi. Uh, if you're connected via Wi-Fi, that is. Uh, Wi-Fi connection is a, a two-way thing. Let's now take a look at asynchronous data link protocols. Asynchronous protocols shown below are used to facilitate communications between two personal computers over the public switch network. Xmodem. The Xmodem protocol was created years ago as a simple means of having two computers talk to each other. With its half duplex mode of operation, ACK, NAK responses, and CRC data checking, the Xmodem protocol has found its way into many applications. Xmodem specifies a half duplex stop and wait protocol using a data frame comprised of four fields. Xmodem frame format. The four fields for Xmodem are the SOH field, header field, data field, and error detection field. The first field of an Xmodem frame is simply a one byte start of heading or SOH field. SOH is a data link control character indicating the beginning of the header. SOH simply indicates that the next byte is the first byte of the header. The second field is a two byte sequence that is the actual header for the frame. Y modem. 
Y modem is a protocol similar to X modem, except with the exceptions. The information field has a maximum capacity of 1024 bytes. Two CAN characters are required to abort a transmission. ITU TCRC16 is used to calculate the frame check sequence. Multiple frames can be sent in succession and then acknowledged with a single ACK or NAK character. Z modem. Z modem is a newer protocol that simply combines the features of X modem and Y modem. X triapt. Kermit is a terminal emulation program as well as a file transfer protocol similar to X modem. Kermit, K-E-R-M-I-T, allows transmitting control characters as text. The control character is transformed into a printable character by adding a fixed number to its ASCII code and adding hashtag sign at the front. Blocked asynchronous transmission, or BLAST, B-L-A-S-T. The BLAST session protocol defines a set of rules for file transfer and file management with a remote computer. It features full duplex transmission and uses sliding window flow control. IBM's 83B asynchronous data link protocol. It was one of the first protocols designed for a central controlled multipoint data circuit with a polling environment. Here the primary station is the host and the remote stations are secondaries. The 83B asynchronous data link protocol uses vertical redundancy checking, character parity as the error detection technique and either symbol substitution or ARQ retransmission for error correction. Let's now understand synchronous data link protocols. Synchronous data link protocols are generally used with synchronous data and synchronous modems and can be either character or bit oriented. IBM's Binary Synchronous Communications, BSC, is commonly used synchronous data link protocol. Binary Synchronous Communications. The BSC, sometimes called BISYNC or Bisynchronous Communications, is a synchronous character-oriented data link protocol developed by IBM. With BSC, each data transmission is preceded by a unique synchronization, or SYN. SYN characters are always transmitted in pairs to avoid accidental occurrence of single SYN character in the middle. The PAD character at the beginning of the sequence is called a leading PAD, or PAD, and is either a 55 hex or an AA hex. The purpose of the leading PAD is to ensure the transitions occur in the data before transmission of the actual message. The transitions are needed for clock recovery in the receiving modem to maintain bit synchronization. The purpose of the trailing PAD is to ensure that the RLSD signal in the receiving modem is held active long enough for the entire received message to be demodulated. If the carrier were shut off immediately at the end of the polling sequence, RLSD would go inactive and disable the received data pin. The character sequence for a specific poll is similar to a general poll, except the two device address DA characters are substituted for the two quotation marks. With a specific poll, both the station and the device address are included. Let's now understand about synchronous data link control, high level data link control. The SDLC is a synchronous bit oriented protocol developed by IBM for use in system network architecture or SNA environments. SDLC can transfer data simplex, half duplex, or full duplex, and can operate over a bus or wing topology. There are two types of stations defined by SDLC, 
primary stations, and secondary stations. All the other stations on an SDLC circuit are secondary stations, which receive commands and return or transmit responses to the primary station. There are three transmission states with SDLC, transient, idle, and active. SDLC frame format. Frames transmitted from the primary and secondary use exactly the same format. There are main fields included in the SDLC frame. Flag begins and ends the error checking procedure with 0 times 7E, which is 0, 111, 1110 in binary. Address This is only the secondary address since all communication occurs via the single primary device. The address can be an individual, group, or broadcast address. Control. This identifies the frame's function. Information, or I. It contains the send sequence number, which is the number of the next frame to be sent, and the receive sequence number, which is the number of the next frame expected to be received. This is also a poll final bit, or PF, which performs error checking. Frame check sequence, or FCS. This check is carried out on the sending and receiving of the frame. In a poll, the address field identifies the station being polled. In a response, the address field contains the station transmitting. So this field effectively is the secondary station's address. Let's now take a look at High Level Data Link Control, or HDLC. The HDLC is the protocol which is now considered an umbrella under which many wide area protocols sit. The ITU-T developed HDLC in 1979, and within HDLC there are three types of stations defined. Primary station, this completely controls all data link operations issuing commands from secondary stations and has the ability to hold separate sessions with different stations. Secondary station. This can only send responses to one primary station. Secondary stations only talk to each other via a primary station. Combined station. This can transmit and receive commands and responses from one other station. The HDLC frame begins and ends the error checking procedure with 0 times 7E, which is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 in binary. There are three types of HDLC frame types defined by the control field. Information frames are used for the data transfer between stations. The send sequence, or next send, NS, and the receive sequence, or next receive, NR, hold the frame sequence numbers. The poll, final bit, is called poll when used by the primary station to obtain a response from a secondary station, and final when used by the secondary station to indicate a response or the end of transmission. Supervisory frames are used to acknowledge frames, request for retransmissions, or to ask for suspension of transmission. The supervisory code denotes the type of supervisory frame being sent. Unnumbered frames are used for link initialization or link disconnection. The unnumbered bits indicate the type of unnumbered frame being used. Let's now look at Logical Link Control, or LLC. The LLC is a subset of High Level Data Link Control, or HDLC, and uses the Asynchronous Balanced Mode, or ABM, subclass of HDLC. It sits in the data link layer between the MAC layer and the Layer 3 protocols and forms an important part of the 802.2 specification. There are three classes of LLC. LLC Class 1, Connectionless CL. This service sends and receives Link Service Data Units, LSDU, without the need for acknowledgement. It supports point-to-point -point 
multipoint, and broadcast communication, and is suitable for higher level protocols that do all the sequencing, addressing, routing, and recovery. These include IPX, TCP IP, Vines, XNS, and AppleTalk, etc. LLC Class 2, Connection Oriented, CO. This is a connection oriented service that provides a point to point link between Link Service Access Points, or LSAP. Although LLC2 responds to the higher layer protocol with respect to opening and closing connections, LLC2 is responsible for flow control, sequencing the frames and error recovery. LLC2 is generally required in environments that run protocols such as NetBIOS and SNA. LLC Class 3, Acknowledged Connectionless, AC, this is a connectionless, acknowledged implementation that is rarely used. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Line Discipline coordinates hop-to-hop -hop data delivery, where a hop is a computer, a network controller, or some type of network connecting device, such as a router. The poll select method of line discipline works with topologies where one device is designated as a primary station and the other device is secondary stations. Flow control defines a set of procedures that tells the transmitting station how much data it can send before it must stop transmitting and wait for an acknowledgement from the destination station. Control information is transmitted by the protocols either in separate control frames or as overhead added to the data and included in the frame. A bit-oriented protocol, or BOP, is a discipline for serial-by-bit information transfer over a data communications channel.